my continued thanks to Saltire Energy, the global market leader in specialist drilling equipment rental. Torquing, testing, refurbishment, and welding. And to my friends at Lux Scott, a jet class luxury vehicle company. If you are looking to travel to any sort of event in style, my suggestion is you look these guys up. Hi everybody, a very warm welcome to this brand new edition of Beg's Banter. So my next guest, I have to confess, I have never seen a player run directly at defenders like this guy. It was like the ball was almost stuck to his feet. He played a major role helping the team to get to Gothenburg, but sadly missed out due to injury. I'm delighted to welcome to Beg's Banter, Dougie Bell. Dougie signed for Aberdeen on the 23rd of June 1979 and quickly established himself as a first team player. Over a six year period, he played a total of 185 games for the Dons, scoring 14 goals. He won six major honours, but that could have been more if injuries had not ruled him out of the 1983 Scottish Cup final and more importantly, Gothenburg. Here is Dougie's Aberdeen story. Thank you so much for jumping on. It's really nice to talk to you. I would like to go right back to the beginning. When Sir Alex left St Mirren for Aberdeen, did he ever have any conversation with you that he would actually like to take you with him? No, I never had that conversation, but it was my last game for St Mirren. We played Celtic and I just made my debut in the, the midweek game against Partick Thistle. And uh, I came on at half time against Celtic and I scored probably the best goal I've ever scored. I beat about four or five players, an amazing dribble and scored at an angle. And after the game, he gets sacked. So I was a bit disappointed because I signed a, a contract for the, the next season. And when he went to Aberdeen, when we played Teddy, when we used to play Aberdeen reserves, I was in the reserves the following season. I never got another first team game. Uh, Teddy spoke to him a couple of times and I kind of knew he was he was quite a fan of mine, but I never spoke to Sir Alex at all. Okay. So, so when you did join Aberdeen and you rejoined Sir Alex in June 1979, did you notice any differences in his character since he became new Aberdeen manager? Well, he was, what's the word? He, he was quite uh, on my case a lot at St Mern. And it never changed when I went to Aberdeen, which was good because it meant I had to work really hard. But when I did go up, it actually, I went up the last game of the season. That was a zero game at Petaudry. And uh, Teddy Scott says to me before the game, look, do you think you're a really good player? Just go out and take over the own. That's what you're good at. And then I'll tell Sir Alex, well, what was Sir Alex saying? I'll tell the boss that you had a good game. And it, that's what happened. And the next day, I went in and signed. And I... Uh, the manager says to me, I want you to stay all, all summer in Aberdeen and train. So by the time the pre-season came, I'd had the ground running because I've been training every day, but all right. yeah. the whole close season. Could you sense in the early days that there was something special on the horizon at this football club? Well, I, when I went, I, I just, the, the, when I went up to the first time, I played there a couple of times in reserves. But there was something just, I felt was something special. But for me, Aberdeen, Petaudry, I just, just the stadium was, was like the, Aberdeen was that clean. And uh, it was it was a great opportunity for me. After the release for St Mern, I, I just couldn't believe my luck that he, he gave me a chance. Can you recall your debut? My debut was against Tottenham Hotspur. Mm. Uh, uh, we won 2-0 and their midfield was Glenn Hoddle, Ozzy Ardelis and Ricky Wheeler. And I thought I'd done quite well, one two nothing. And uh, the next day we were in watching it in video, and the manager slaughtered me. Did he? For me, at the park and picking up runners and all that. And it's the first time I seen myself on TV. Okay. So it was interesting watching it, but I couldn't wait for it to finish because every time something came up, he kind of picked me up. Hmm. Did you but, notice? Did you notice a big difference in quality, Dougie, from 
from when you had played at St Mirren to now playing at Aberdeen and making your debut? Well, you had Wally Muller, Stuart Kennedy, mm. Joe Harper was playing then, Drew Jarvie, all the young guys were just beginning to come through. Mark McGee, I, I knew before, he was coming old boy. Striking, there was good, but there was good players at Man as well, be fair, because I'd, I'd, I'd been training full time with them, Frank McGarvey. But Aberdeen had a big squad of really good players, and it, you could right for the you could sense there was a real Steve Hartsbold as well was there, so yeah, it was a strong, strong, strong squad they had. Right, let's do the first of these quick fire questions so you can answer them as you wish. You can answer them in one word answers or you can give me longer answers. It's entirely up to you. So your first quick fire question is, where did you lodge in the early days when you first moved to Aberdeen? Well, that's a good question, Ali, because when I'm up, Sir Alex put me into Diggs okay. where, at Constitution Street. Okay. And the, the, the girl who stayed above was my future wife, Hazel. No way. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, she wasn't a, I hadn't really met her, but her mum had said to her, she'd been away a holiday, and mum says, there's a good looking guy down the stairs <laughs> that you'll really like. And it was, that was, and uh, we started dating, and that's how, so it was just, it was just kind of fate. Yeah, love at first sight. Yeah, no, we've been married, we've been married for 40 years, anniversary yeah. this year. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful. Who did you hang out with in the early days? Well, initially, initially, I used to kind of go home a lot of weekends because I was, I was still only just kind of turned, I think it was 18. Mm. So I used to take on my washing back at the weekends for my mum to wash. So I went back to my mum and dad's at weekends. So it was it was quite, but the training, we used to train in the afternoon as well. So morning and afternoon. So I never really, Derek Hamilton, I used to have the odd pipe with him. Yeah. Like Hamlet, he was kind of, I was, he was kind of aged with me, and uh, we kind of, we had the same, shared the same kind of wrath of Fergie. So it was good to get with somebody that felt the same as me. Can you recall what you spent your first bonus on? Yeah. Uh, no, I can't. I was, I was also a bit of saver, so I think when I went up there, I was looking to buy a. No, I bought, I think I bought a house when I was 20. Okay. So I was kind of looking to get myself my own place. So that's probably when I'm doing it, deposit in the house. Okay. So were you slightly disappointed not to get on the pitch in our what eventually turned out to be our league winning game against Hibs at Easter Road? Because you were one of two unused substitutes. The other one was Drew Jarvie. So were you disappointed? No, I wasn't disappointed. I was actually, I was actually delighted. I was on the bench that day because okay. I, I was kind of just kind of trying to break through. Then, so it was great involved. Got a league medal that year. I think I started five or six games or sub a lot, but it was just, it was just a really special day, and I got caught with it with the celebrations. It was just kind of surreal mm. one of that day. So I, I was just glad to be part of the the squad. To be honest, and it was good to be put on the bench and feeling involved. Because the following season, you played many, many more games. So did you feel at that time that you were starting to make the breakthrough? I, I think when I realised I thought I might be good enough was we played a kind of pre-season tournament against Man United, mm. Southampton and West Ham. Mm. And I played the West Ham Southampton games and I played. I started playing like a bit of confidence. What I was good at like taking people on and, and that's what I thought probably a wee bit better than I thought it was. And that's game, that started giving me a wee bit of boost and I've started getting on team a bit more then. Can we skip forward to the 1982 Scottish Cup final? Because you came on for John McMaster that day. Were you given specific instructions by Sir Alex before you went on? Uh, no, really. I, I, I kind of vaguely remember him saying like, to have a run okay. at the midfield. I, I don't know if it was Bob Russell was against. I think it might be Bob Russell, but it was one each one I've known. And uh, I think the whole Mandrellan with the Scottish Cup final, first Cup final played in, I was buzzing on one because I'd been injured. Yeah. And I was I didn't think I'd make the final, but it, it, it put me sub and I think I went on after 50 odd minutes. And uh, it worked too well. I think it gave me, it gave me a bit of credit after the game, which is very unusual. So... 
I must have done okay. How was that occasion? Because obviously it was the first time that we'd won the Scottish Cup for many, many years. Um, it was an emphatic win in the end. Why do you think we were able to just turn the screw, particularly in, um, in extra time? Uh, I played really well like that, that, that game. Uh, I think it was quite tight. The first half was tight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gordon Strachan was good that day and McGee was good. It was going forward, we're a good team. And I just, I think we're a better team than Rangers, to be, to be honest. And that's how we won. We won, we were a better team on the day and player wise. Let's jump ahead to the Bayern Munich game in the Olympic Stadium, the quarterfinals of the Cup Winners Cup. Many have suggested that that was your finest game in an Aberdeen shirt. What are your own thoughts on your own performance that night? Uh, that night, he, he never played Gordon Strike. He played me, Sammy, and Neil Cooper midfield. And we were all quite aggressive. But it gave me a wee, kind of, wee bit of freer rein to go forward. Because mm. Sammy and Tati were better tacklers than me. But whenever I played Wiley too, I always enjoyed playing them because they, they always gave 100%. So uh, lucky enough, I played quite a few games with, with the two of them. But I just remember that game. It was... Again, Andrelin was was gone, was in the Olympic Stadium, playing against the top players. I just I think the European games just suited me. And I, I did get a wee bit of, it gave me a wee bit of mere free array in the games to, to actually take people on. But I, to be fair to myself, I did tackle as well and I worked hard. I think that period of time we had a really hard working team. Yeah. And nobody, nobody let the team down. Even the better players, Strike and McGee and the, 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 the defence was a, was the key, I think. No Leighton, Kennedy, McLeish, Miller, Big Doogie. And everybody else worked defensively as well to help, but they were, they were the ones that, that really were really based on, I think, were success. See, that game, Dougie, I've always wondered if the confidence that you gained from that game set you in good stead for the way that you played against Watershy, because... That night at Pataudry, you almost played without any sort of fear. Is that a fair assumption? Well, I think that that season, uh, I think I started all the home games except the Bayern Munich game or so. Hmm. And I think all the games, we started really well, all the home games. And uh, it, the boss did say their games get at them right away. So it, it was good for me because usually it was... The opposite, to be mere a passer and keep it kind of tidy and keep my shape. But they games, I got to be mere of kind of, I can get let loose a bit. And I, it suited me. And it was just the, the, the European nights between was just special. I love playing the games. They're the ones I also remember. Yeah. And the fans were great and just a, just a great atmosphere. It was an incredible start to the game. Did you ever think that you would make such a brilliant start? No, because you don't really know. Archie and the manager had talked about them, and he, he never, he always kind of uh, said they were good players you're playing against. So you kind of knew roughly the shape of them and what they'd done, but you never knew to run the park. Mm. But if you start well, especially European games, I think, and the noise and everything like that, it definitely gets you going. Okay. Right, let's do the next round of quick fire questions. What was your favourite pre match meal? Uh, well, Aberdeen it used to be chicken. Later on, my career on down south, it was like I liked fish. But the chicken with Aberdeen I always had. But you never get much of a choice then. <laughs> okay. Which training drill did you enjoy the most? I liked small sided games. And then sometimes the manager would. Would make me say I've only two touch or one touch when everybody else was all in. At the time, I used to be really no happy with that, but it probably made me more aware as a player, probably passing on a bit. Mm. And in fact, when I got older, I realised my passing was better than what I thought it was. Mm. When I had to rely on my passing rather than when I was younger, I just wanted to take people on. Mm. What training drill did you least enjoy? Teddy Scott used to do this thing at Seton Park called the Snake. 
and you had to lie down and then jump up and jump on somebody's back and then jump over them. And I hated that. And it went on for ages. That was one of his warm ups. <laughs> and he had another one in the car park where it was one for Jim Layton. And they used to cross balls for his side and we attacked the ball. And people were getting black eyes and broken noses. I got to go to the hospital once with four sticks under my eye with Jim's studs. Oh. That was that was quite meaty. I kind of see the players doing that now. No chance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you talk me through the injury that you received, which obviously ultimately put you out of the Cup Winners' Cup final? Yeah, we played Celtic in the semi-final in 88 Hamden, mm. and I'd get tackled after about 20-odd minutes of the boys Sinclair, Graham Sinclair play for Celtic. He went in a wee bit late. And I played I played the whole game, but it wasn't until after the game. The one Peter Wakeham was sub scored that I think Eric Black and Neil Cooper both got injured that game, so I had to stay on. But I got up in the bus, Michael swolled right up, and the next day Alec Ferguson and Archie Knox took me to the hospital and they said I'd fractured my ankle. And okay. they put it in plaster right away. Because the final was only I think it was maybe two or three weeks away. And uh, they put it in plaster for a week, took it out, I think. I played the last game of the season against Kilmarnock, but it wasn't right. And then uh, the manager arranged the game at Easter Road on Sunday before we flew it, and I played that, and then I get tackled, and it kind of went again. Okay. So I was, I was struggling. For, in that game at Easter Road, when you got when you received that tackle, yeah, did you know instantly that's me out? I, I kind of thought. I uh, Artie Milk says in the half time, look, you're doing well, son, but if you want to start the final, you have to show your hundred percent. Yeah. So I started running with the ball. I'd been a wee bit guarded the first half. So I thought I'd start and I went full out and I get tackled and <coughs> I felt it go again. <coughs> but I was kind of hoping I might have been stuck on the bench because I previously I played a couple of games with quarter zone jabs. Okay. But, but then, it, because he'd already had to tell Stuart Kennedy that he was going to be on the bench, I don't think he'd take a chance putting two hundred players on the bench, which was fair enough. Okay. So when did he breach the subject with you that you weren't even going to be part of the squad that night? And how difficult was that? <clears throat> well, we've never, and we, I'd been doing kind of light ankle stuff, just jogging, and I was still kind of hopeful I might go on the bench. And uh, they were the first the team were training, and I was kind of just kind of doing me bits and pieces. And he took me, pulled me aside, and he said he wasn't going to use me. And I'd say to him, "Look, could you not give me a cortisone and put me on the bench like he'd done a couple of times?" He says he can't because Stuart Kennedy had been promised a place on the bench. And then he said that he'd been he told me he'd been left out for them fell and winning the Scottish Cup final. Mm -hmm. But he says, "Look, son, you're young. I think it was only 21, 22." You'll get more chances in the future. So just be strong and then go on with it. Then that was it. Yeah, because obviously professionally, it, it was a huge blow for you. But privately, how did you cope with that, Dougie? And how did you get over the disappointment of it? Uh, well, it was, it was disappointing. I've got to be honest, it was disappointing. And, and when the game started, my wife was pregnant at the game. Yeah. So instead of sitting in the dugout, I walked up to the stand to sit beside her. And she went, how are you not playing? And I went, well, because I hadn't, I hadn't seen her. And there was no mobile phones there anymore. And I wanted to go and see the wife. And that. So they kept the teams. And that, that kind of hit home a bit, even done that. But but it was, it was was I was just delighted the team won on the night. And I felt as if I was, I'd been involved all the way through the campaign. So I was disappointed. But I thought I wanted, what I kind of concentrated on was getting myself fit again. Mm. And I think the next year, was probably I, I done well the next season, won the, the double and got to the same as the cup, won a super cup. So I can't really complain about about missing out things because he did play me a lot most of the big games. Yeah, because obviously you went on to have much more success after the disappointment of Gothenburg for you personally. So can I ask Dougie, how good was that team? Well, I mentioned earlier the defence was. Jim Layton in goals, best goal I played with. Uh, Wally Muller McLeese as a partnership were, were probably the best mm. Scottish I've ever had, I think. Mm. And Stuart Kendall right back was just, he was a superb player. 
great for the team spirit. Even now, it was at my dinner, and the stories are, are great. Even though I was there when it all happened, it's and big to it, just a superb back four. And then the striking Peter Ware, wide, well, talented, great cross of the ball, striking, could pick people out, score loads of goals. Peter could go either side. And McGeary Black, John Hewitt up front. It was a great combination. And the three was Sammy Tati, John McMaster. It was great, great, uh, they can all round balance mm-hmm. where they could change it a bit, a bit when they had to. No, it was a, it was a easily. Uh, the biggest thing I think in the Aberdeen team was I played for a few teams after Aberdeen, but I never played for a team that worked at Aberdeen. Okay. That, that Aberdeen worked hard. If you lost the ball, you chased back and you gave 100%. And that Aberdeen team, Aberdeen worked 100%, apart from all the talented players they had. Okay. Well, you got to put that down, Alan Ferguson, haven't you? Yeah. Why did you decide to leave? And was it a <clears> difficult decision <throat> to come to? It was a difficult decision because my wife was Aberdonian and we'd been there like, six and a half years, nearly seven years. I'd had a bad injury in my last season. I'd missed quite a lot of games and I'd, I'd got a kind of... I'm against Hearts, Henry Smith made me the ribs and I pumped in my lung and I went to hospital and it was, it was quite serious. And uh, But I got back playing, but the manager kept sending me to the hospital to, to day checks on me and I was doing these runs on a exercise bike in the hospital saying I'd, I'd do a lung capacity an athlete. But he wasn't, a, he had it in his, I just felt he had it in his head. He doubts about my fitness. So, and he signed Jim Bet, and I thought that limits my, my thing. Uh, to be fair, I, I played there all the years, and the last three years I've played quite a lot of games, and that was playing against Sammy and Tati and John McMaster mm. and midfield. So I'd, I did play all, all the big games I managed to play. But I just felt, I don't know, maybe it's just time for me to move on now. He's got doubts about my fitness. And and I knew there was a few teams interested in me. Mm. So my wife wasn't too happy. I went down to <laughs> leaving Aberdeen. But I thought my career, just it was time to move on. Yeah. I played 200 games, won three leagues, Scottish Cups. It was a great, great period. In my, it was the best period of my career. So that's what all my good memories of playing for Aberdeen. Mm. Okay, let's finish off with your final quick fire questions. What was your most memorable moment in an Aberdeen shirt? Uh, I think I've quite a lot of good moments, but I think maybe the 94 Cup final against Celtic. Again, I'd been injured for a while. He brought me back, put me on the bench, and I came on for it's probably John Mass again. I came on for again after about 58 minutes or something like that. And I'd done really well that game. And I was really worried because I'd had a hamstring problem. Okay. That I would it would go a bit. But I'd, he'd asked me in the morning of the game how I was, and I says I was fit. And uh, near the end, I'd got the ball and I went a week and I'd run. And I felt my hamstring, my right hamstring tighten up. So I hit one for about 30 yards on my left foot, which I never would have done. <laughs> and I hit the inside of the post, the old post, and came out sideways. I next try and put it in my gay scored. But the best one, when I went on the bus after one, my wife says to me, that's so great, you scored the one in goal, because I'd jumped up. Okay. When I hit it, because I thought it was a goal, but she thought I'd scored the goal, so to say, oh, we're going to, I think we're going to St Andrews or something for, for a celebration. I said, no, I never scored the goal. But that was, I, I was mere relief. We won that, because I was worried in case I went on a sub and then broke down. Yeah. But you wanted to play in the cup final. Of course. So that was that was a, a good moment for me. Okay. Who was the funniest guy in the dressing room? Well, it's got to be Neil Kipper. Neil Kipper was, was so funny. And uh, the ones they used to do, Neil Cooper, uh, doing Fergie, he was great in person in Fergie. So, uh, no, I'm just a lovely guy as well. And it's so sad yeah. that he passed away early. Yeah, sadly missed. Okay, and your final question. What was the favourite or your favourite Aberdeen goal that you scored? I've got two. I've got. I scored a volley against St. Lern, I think it was probably '84 season. I, I scored it in about ten minutes. Mark McGee cross and I hit it the first time. I scored. It was good to score against St. Lern after they'd let me go. But the other one, I think, it was the same season. We played St. Johnson on around about Christmas, 
And I'd already scored, probably my score, I think I scored about five to win. And I hit a 30 yarder, my right foot, the top corner, make it 3 0 right before half time. Then the snow came down and the power enough. Yeah, I was just going to ask and you, was that the game that got abandoned at half time? And I just scored, I think I'd have been my sixth after six of the season. And I never scored after that. <laughs> Did you know? So that, that was that my best goal for Aberdeen easily. Yeah. It's funny, actually. Uh, so Alex Ferguson gave an interview recently where he said that 45 minutes of football was one of the greatest performances he had ever seen by any Aberdeen team. Well, I can't really remember too much. I remember we were in three and a half time. I can just remember my shot and my goal and the disappointment that the game was cancelled at half time. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we gave a few teams a bit of doing that year because yeah. we, were on, we were that last year. I think that was the one won a double for it. I thought we played some really good football again. Yeah, that, that day at Pataudry is a day, I think, for, for people that were there, will never, ever be forgotten. Trying to get across the golf links in that, what was the most scariest of blizzards, dearie me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dougie, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Uh, delighted to get you on. And um, hopefully we will catch up again very soon. Thank you so much, mate. Cheers, Ali. My thanks to the magnificent Dougie Bell. If you have enjoyed today's show and you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to come and join us here on Ali Beg ABTV. We continue to build momentum. So there we are. We are all finished for this episode of Beg's Banter. I really hope you enjoyed our chat and keep an eye on my social media channels for our next guest who will be coming very soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.